Hello, yes, this is Adrian. Hello. Miss Howard. Wait, let me get this speaker on. Oh, I'm... Oh, my God, I can't believe it's really you. Hello? Yes, ma'am, can you hear me? Yes. I cannot believe it's really you. Oh, wow. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I just want to let you know that I am recording this. Uh, you're not on video per your request, um, but I am recording this for my podcast. Is that okay with you? Sure. Okay. All right. Oh, my God, y'all. It's Mickey Howard. Again, Miss Howard, we are not live. Um, 12 songs on the Billboard Top 100, 7 Top 10 hits, and 2 number ones, according to Billboard as of yesterday. Okay. Soul Train Awardee, Grammy, and AMA nominee, and multi-platinum selling recording artist. Y'all, I have the incomparable and legendary Mickey Howard. How are you doing? I am good. How are you? I'm good. I've been working on this interview with you for two years now, and it's good that I'm finally we're finally able to do this. Thank you. No problem. So let's dive right into it, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, it doesn't seem to uh, be a surprise um, that you rose to stardom. I mean, your parents are two gospel singers. Um, you were around the likes of uh, the late uh, Aretha Franklin, as well as uh, Mavis Staple of the Staple Singers. Um, so it's no surprise that you were destined to be who you are. I watched one of your interviews um, one of my favorite songs uh, from you is uh, Love Under New Management. And I would sing it for you, but I can't sing and I don't want to embarrass myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I remember watching an interview and you said songs uh, mean different things for you at different times. Um, what does Love Under New Management mean for you right now? Wow. <laughs> you know, it's a song that has really done a lot for me in terms of, you know, keeping me out there and, and people we identifying with each other and things like that. Right now, uh, it means uh, uh, a wonderful past. It really mm. does. Okay. Okay. Um, you also cited that Billie Holiday was one of your biggest influences, um, and you even had the opportunity to uh, play uh, Billie Holiday in Spike Lee's Malcolm X. Um, what did that moment mean for you? Oh, it was exciting. I was, you know, very excited to play Billie Holiday and, uh, uh, for the Malcolm X movie. Uh, it meant that we were solidifying her in history. And um, that, you know, continuing the legacy of jazz. Uh, also, you know, Billy never had any children uh, of her own from her body. But she has so many children mm -hmm. uh, in the world of music. And I wish she had gotten an opportunity to know that. Um, but it means to me uh, 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 making sure that, you know, our one of our pioneers in music, in jazz especially, her legacy continued so it was wonderful wow now i know that well i don't know just based off of thing because I, I follow you for a long time from again love under new management I'm, I'm a young cat um however i still uh i have always followed you uh, what is your favorite song to perform oh wow it depends on the sound system. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I, I really enjoy singing Ain't Nobody Like You. Mm, I've been up. Uh, again, I was I was singing for you, but I don't want to embarrass myself. But uh, I remember I remember uh, I was driving in my uh, 97 Toyota Camry. That was my first car. Oh, and I was car. it was a, it was a great car. My grandmother gave it to me. And I remember that song came on the radio. I've been up, I've been down. 
I've had my feet swept off the ground by somebody. I remember that song came on the radio and literally I had to pull off on the side of the road. <laughs> it's, it's just something that, 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 that spoke to me about that. What does that song mean for you? Now, that's a, a song that's actually more true to my life. You know, I have been up and down and, you know, bad, bad uh, 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 love affairs and so on and so forth. And, you know, I really enjoy the beat. And, uh, yeah, it's a true song. Wow. Now, question. Except for I feel like I'm singing to myself, ain't nobody like me. Mm. Oh, wow. So, so you're yeah, talking yeah. to yourself. Ain't nobody like you. You're actually talking about yourself. Yeah. Oh, wow. Huh. I'm glad we got that. Well, I never knew that. Well, I mean, now. I'm saying in, in this day, in this time. When I did it, I'm so sure it was about, you know, uh, love affairs and what have you. But as you grow and grow... It's like, yeah, that song is definitely to me. What is the normal day of Mickey Howard? What does, when Mickey Howard wakes up? What the pandemic, <laughs> quarantine, or regular? <laughs> a little bit of both. A little bit of, so both. Before quarantine and then, and then what, it, what have you done to adapt given quarantine? Well, mostly I babysit my grandkids or, or at least one of them uh, and cook and uh, order stuff on Amazon and, um, you know, work on some music here and there and write. It's pretty much the same, except for, um, when the pandemic is not happening, I do travel a lot more and do, um, shows. Wow. What's been your favorite, um, Someone that you have met that you did not know they were a Mickey Howard fan and you saw them and that surprised you um, was a Mickey Howard fan? Madonna. Madonna? Really? Yeah, she wrote me a note years ago uh, and, and, and left it at the record company for me. She had come in like before I did. Mm-hmm. And I suppose they told her, oh, Mickey, I was coming like that, whatever. And she left me a note, and it was really, really cool. I was like, wow. Now, who's someone that you fanned out over? Rita Franklin, Nancy Wilson, Betty Carter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. If you could see someone perform live, one last concert, dead or alive. Who would that person be? What concert would you go to? Wow, let me see. Prince. Of course. <laughs> Prince okay. is my favorite. Prince is my one of my favorites. Yes, he was so good. Now, what new artists do you listen to now? Oh wow! I you know uh, everybody. I love her. H e r. Mm -hmm. Her. And I love, um, of course, Jasmine Sullivan, and it's a, it's a lot of guys out that are mostly on the internet, and I hear one or two of their records. I don't know their names. A lot of different male singers now. Um, uh, you know, when the radio comes on, I, I can listen to the uh, Cardi B up, up, up. <laughs> you know, I don't. I, you know, it's, it has a different meaning for me. I mean, you know. She's talking about, I, I, I think, sexual connotations. And I'm, when I hear it, I'm talking about when it's up, it's up. When it's up, it's stuck. We ain't going yeah. back. <laughs> we going straight up. I feel that. Yes. Yes. So what, are there any artists that you would work with or would want to work with? Well, everybody would love to work with a hit artist. Yeah. Like somebody that's like, but as far as just artistry, um gosh it's so many wonderful people it's so many it's so many so many it goes all the way from the older guys i mean the more mature from teddy riley all the way to the i would love to work with the migos or, or wait you know, the migos can, really man i think they're so i love their music i don't know what they're talking about <laughs> I'm, I'm like i don't know what y'all talking about but you know 
that that goes with a lot of the you know youthful slang all the way from back in the day with the the hip cats and stuff from the 40s and 30s until now there's always been a different language uh of the youth you know Mm -hmm. so i don't really know what they're saying but i think they are really on to something i think there's something uh, of a new rock and roll type thing and they have to mature into that but i definitely hear it wow um i was watching an interview with um that you did with i believe it was the chicago the chicago jazz festival and there was an interview um that you did and you said that you don't feel as though that based off of um music standards um that you are successful um what does success what does success mean for you during the time uh during that time and then what does that mean for you now and do do you still feel the same way oh man it's like according to the standards of most people and uh in general oh we missed the mark because we didn't get the success of uh my peers in terms of whitney houston and uh nita baker and stuff like that uh even mary j blige who came after i never achieved that sort of success and people expected that from me and that was uh, uh hard to be a disappointment and it wasn't my fault or anything but it still feels you know it's like oh i don't want to be a disappointment but in terms of how i feel about myself i feel extremely successful and you can't show and tell that that's has, that has to be an inner feeling that's something that you must know for yourself because people are always going to compare you and and especially now in the digital age and the social media and all that oh yeah you must drive uh rose voices <laughs> which excuse me which i did have at one time and they still make them but uh you know the, the standard is 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 financial and monetary at this time, you know, mm-hmm. people consider that success. And, you know, I, I feel successful in my heart. I, I, I enjoy my life. And that's the big, biggest success you can have. Wow. What advice would you give to new artists, uh, people who are trying to make it in this industry? What advice would you give to them? I don't have any. Mm. Fair enough. Uh, fair enough. I used to say things and stuff, and it, it turned out, you know, you don't realize sometimes you may be hurting the feelings of somebody or stuff like that and, or putting people in situations. I just say, you know, pray and, and follow your own path. And there are some patterns out there that you can, you know, you can look at Tina Turner. That's why they make these uh, documentaries, the artists themselves, because they want you to see if you really want to do this and what you must do to do it and uh and how you can possibly evade some of the pitfalls that many of the uh, ones that came before the youth you know fell in so you just say pray a lot and i hope it's real in your heart and you're not just trying to do it for monetary gain because you'll end up doing anything mm. One of my favorite performances of you is you had on this white peplum dress with the short blonde finger wave and you were singing Try a Little Tenderness. Do you know what right. do you know which performance I'm talking about? Yeah, Madison Square Garden, uh, Atlantic Records anniversary. Now you now you put your foot in that song like you 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 sang that song as you do all the other songs but it, it was something that stuck out about that particular song. Um, what does that song mean for you? Trying a little uh, tenderness. Uh, Aretha Franklin and Otis Redding. Uh, that um, uh, I I was bridging the gap to the next generation, so they they're not forgotten. Mm. Now, what was it like growing up with family in the show business? Um, did you, as a kid, did you, I mean, of course, from what I've seen, you've always expressed a love for music. Um, 
was there any pressure on you as far as having um, parents who were in the music industry as gospel singers successfully? Was there any pressure on you uh, to go into the music industry? Uh-uh, no. My, my parents both were very proud and really was like, oh my gosh, you know, and they wanted me to be successful. Uh, I enjoyed my upbringing in terms of the people I was surrounded with extremely wonderful, talented people, and they were so much fun. And I, I would watch as a kid and say, I want to be like Aretha Franklin. I want to be like Roberta Flack and all of this stuff. It was really great. Diana Ross was a big influence. Mm -hmm. Looking back over it, if you don't, if you weren't a singer, uh, what do you think you would have, what route you would have taken professionally? Maybe a nurse mm. or, yeah. Well, you know, um, when you're in um, music like this, it is part of being, it's part of therapy. It's part of being, it's like being a nurse mm. or a doctor. Wow. Um, I recently rewatched, I've watched your documentary on TV One um, a thousand times. Um, and I recently uh, rewatched it. The only question that I have for you is what advice do you have for uh, young people um, who are battling like internal ba internal battles? Um, what advice do you have so that they can internal overcome battles, it? Internal battles like what? <laughs> um, internal battles as far as um, dealing with domestic violence or dealing with addictions. Um, what advice would you give to them in order to overcome that? <laughs> get out mm. <laughs> get out pray mm -hmm. you know and if you're being abused really you have to make a sincere plan and uh, you should call the uh, uh, hotline for abuse and get some help and get away from it or else you're going to end up you know you're going to kill them or they're going to kill you mm -hmm. so what's next for you musically what's next for you same old thing. Make a record. Do a movie. Something. Now, I play the piano. I can send you some of my stuff. I play the piano. I can send you some stuff. Please do. Wow. Thank you so much, Miss Howard, for taking the time to talk with me. Well, it's my pleasure. I enjoy it very much. All right, Thank so you for knowing your, your, uh, what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little nervous. I was nervous because I got sick on Sunday and I was coughing and I went to go get a COVID test yesterday and it came back negative, but I was still coughing and sneezing and I was so scared of how I was going to make it through this interview, but I was glad that I was able to. Oh, wow. I hope, you know, uh, you can't trust the test when they're negative. You still have to act as if you have COVID. Really? Yeah, because uh, we had, our family has really um, had a, a bout with COVID. Everybody seems to have gotten it. My daughter-in-law died. Oh, wow. That. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, I, it was horrible. My son had it like right around Christmas. Uh, my grandson had it. Uh, I had it. It's just been, and it's just horrible. You don't want this. <laughs> So, you know, and the test came back negative for my grand, my uh, daughter-in-law. She took tests, you know, and, and, and they kept coming back negative. And then she eventually got so sick and uh, she died. Wow. I'm sorry to hear that. So be careful with the negative test. Just re act as if you, you know, still have it. You know, wear your mask, stay mm -hmm. away from people, try to isolate, you know, get your disinfectant for your bathroom. Wow. So, you know, be really careful anyway. Well, I definitely appreciate that. It's my pleasure again. <laughs> <laughs> but for real, Miss Howard, I am going to send you some some music that I have. I need it. Send it. Wait, hold on. You, um, you got a few seconds. I'll play something to you before you wrote. It'll take you 10 seconds to play it. All right, let's do it. Ah. Dump. 
Rapsın nesi çeyi? Kim gede? that song in 10th grade oh wow and if you can put some music to it and that's all you got so far no i know i have i have the whole no that's the um that's the the verses so the verse goes like that for the uh 16 bars and then the chorus It goes like that throughout the entire song. So I have the, the verse and the chorus. Um, it's already done. Well, send it to me. I'll listen. If you write to it, it's yours. <coughs> Hello? Yeah, hey, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yep. If you if you put lyrics to it, it's yours. You can have it. Okay, great. Thank you so much again, Miss Howard. My pleasure, darling. And I will be sending this over to you. Okay, I'll love to hear it. Alright, be safe, be safe, be safe. And again, thank you so much. I will. Alright, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <coughs> Y'all.